Imagine one service failure bringing down your entire system. This is what happens when you don't have the right safeguards in place. I've worked with microservices and distributed systems for years, and in this video, I'll show you why and when cascading failures happen and three strategies to prevent them. This video is part of a 10 episode series on microservices communication, and I highly recommend you watch the entire series to get the full picture of this complex topic. The link of the playlist in the description. Let's take a gateway that receives external client's request and call the appropriate internal services to perform the requested actions. For example, the gateway could call a video service to create a new video, then call a notification service to send a confirmation email to the user. And in some cases, you can have a chain of services calling each other. For example, the video service could call the transcript service to generate a transcript for the video. You can imagine all sorts of complex flows, but as long as each service is doing its job properly, everything is fine. But what if for some reason, the video service is being very slow? This will directly impact the performance of the gateway because when the gateway calls the video service, it has to wait for a response before it can itself respond to the client. But worse, now imagine that the transcript service is being slow. This has a cascading effect because now it slows down the video service and the gateway. How can we prevent one slow service from bringing down performance of the entire system? Imagine that you own an ice cream shop. When an ice cream reaches its expiry date, unfortunately, you have to throw it away. The same principle can be applied for your requests. Instead of you waiting indefinitely for a response, you can set a timeout, and if the service doesn't respond within that time, you give up and you throw away the request. That's a great start. At least now, we don't have services waiting forever, and you can even return a helpful message to the client. For example, video uploads unavailable, please try again later, something like that. So now let's go back to your ice cream shop and suppose you get a daily delivery of a hundred ice cream, but you only manage to sell 10 a day. Even if you throw away expired ice cream to make space, there is a point where you will completely run out of space in your freezer. And that's the same in the gateway. If you have a lot of users sending many requests to the gateway, and the gateway forwards those requests to the video service and waits for a response. If the video service is slow to respond, the request will keep piling up at the gateway level. And even with timeouts in place, there is a point where the gateway will simply run out of resources and it will be unable to handle any new incoming requests. When that happens, your entire system would be totally unavailable to external clients. Even requests completely unrelated to the video can't be handled because the gateway is unresponsive. And all of that because of one slow service. So timeouts are a good start, but they are not enough. In your ice cream shop, you could say that you can only have 10 ice creams of each flavor in the freezer at any given time. So when you get a new delivery, you check how many ice creams of what flavor you already have. And if you already have 10, you don't put new ice creams in the freezer. For our gateway, this means that we want to limit the number of outstanding requests sent to a particular service. In this case, we can say that if we already have 10 pending requests to the video service, we don't send any more requests and we immediately fail any new attempts to send a request to the video service. Limiting the number of requests sent can be a very efficient strategy, especially when dealing with a particularly slow service. But let's imagine that the video service is completely down. Limiting the number of requests and having timeout does not help in that case because every single request will immediately fail. And is it even worth sending requests to a service that is down or completely unresponsive? Probably not. So what would be more efficient is to detect when a service is down and simply stop sending requests to it until it's back up. And that strategy is called the circuit breaker pattern. There are several ways you can implement the detection of a service being down. But one common way is to count the number of failed requests to a service over a given period of time. And when that number exceeds a certain threshold, this means that there is an issue 
with that service so you open the circuit breaker and when the circuit breaker is open you immediately fail any new attempts to send requests to the broken service and by the way if you have detected that a given service is down you don't always have to return an error to the client depending on the use case you can return a default value or a cached response or even return a partial response after a determined amount of time the client should try again and if it's successful close the circuit breaker and everything is back to normal you now know three strategies that you can use to make your services more resilient and prevent a total meltdown you can use timeouts to prevent services from waiting forever for a response you can limit the number of outstanding requests from a client to a particular service and you can use the circuit breaker pattern to detect when a service is down and prevent requests from being sent to it but these are just safeguards to prevent issues from getting completely out of control and getting propagated to the entire system if you choose a blocking synchronous communication style where your services wait for a response before they can continue you will always be limited by the slowest service in your system but before you can even apply any of the pattern we discussed here you have to watch this video where i show you what you have to put in place first so that your services even know where to send their requests and after that feel free to watch the rest of the series in the playlist to carry on learning about other communication styles